Hi, welcome to Best Practices Weekly. Today we'll look at an article that can help us learn how to sit in the driver's seat of the data that we are collecting in our classrooms. I found this article, Why Teachers Must Be Data Experts, in the January 2009 edition of Educational Leadership. Jennifer Morrison, who is the author of this article, is an award-winning teacher, and um, she talks about that she actually um, loves data, and she is practicing in the classroom. She loves the way that data connects her to her students and helps um, connect the students to their learning and um, is very reflective for her. But she proposes the idea that in order to make the best use of data, the level of expertise has to really shift from district and school level administration holding the data and telling the teachers what to do with it. And that has to shift into the hands of the teachers where the teachers are owners of the data. They're driving that need for data and how to use it. Um, and then they're sharing out. So really making that shift between school level administration and district administration owning the data to putting it into the hands and empowering the teachers. I want to take a moment for us to reflect on your own use of data. Do you find your use of data something that empowers you or something that is required? The article makes the point that data should be a natural occurrence of teaching and learning. So teaching plus learning is really what equals data. And I want you if, you, if you have a certain mindset of data, to kind of open your mind to the fact that you're collecting data throughout your classroom all through the day, whether it's um, a self-assessment, whether it's a, a formative assessment, whether it's a quick thumbs up, thumbs down, tell me if you agree. You're constantly using your teaching and students' learning to drive what happens next in your classroom. And when we start to think of data that way, we can empower ourselves to make better use of the data that we get to choose and to make better use of the data that is required for us to use. The author of the article suggests that one, pay, one way for teachers to um, build capacity within themselves to own data is to start with a data notebook. And then there are three requirements for a data notebook. The first one is that you have to document the frequency of the data collected. Is this um, a one-time data collection? Is this something that you'll collect and analyze weekly or monthly? Also, you have to reflect on the type of teacher thinking that it showed. So are you, is this descriptive? Are you just describing what happens? Is this analytical? Is this reflective on your teaching practice? And then the type of information that the data represents. Are you gauging student learning? Are you analyzing demographics? Are you looking at which instructional practices and strategies yielded the highest results? So those are the three requirements of a data notebook. You can kind of think of it as a portfolio of how you have um, a portfolio for you yourself as the teacher for how you have incorporated um, data in your classroom. This article focuses a lot on empowering teachers to ask their own questions. So you as a staff may have your teacher questions that your school administration asks you or questions you have to answer for your district about your data that you're collecting. But the author really um, is for empowering teachers to ask their own questions because that is when we can set aside assumptions about how students learn and really connect one-on-one -on -one with students. So these questions might be, you know, why did Susie not do well on this assignment when I know that she knows these vocabulary words? Or what hindered Mark's ability to do well on this fluency reading when, you know, last week he did 100 words per minute. Why did he only do 70 words per minute this time? So empowering us to ask those questions helps us set aside what we think we already know about our students and really connect with them on a different, different level and analyze their learning trends. Another shift that this article focuses in on is involving all stakeholders in the data analysis. So on a professional development level, when we involve our peers with our own data analysis, it can help us deepen our reflections. 
also hold us to that level of accountability that is important. When we involve students and parents in individual student data, it helps them take ownership of student learning and of the data, of the learning gains or the learning losses. So it's important to keep in mind that um, not just your school level administration and your district level administration are stakeholders. Involve your teams, your peers, your vertical PLC groups, and of course your parents and students. Looking at how we can take this ownership of our own data, which is the best practice, back to our classroom, I think it's important to work to build capacity in ourselves to analyze our data, and that includes us asking our own questions and us kind of sitting in the driver's seat by utilizing those data notebooks. So doing that is a step towards making that natural, natural extension of teaching and assessing. And then when sharing that with all stakeholders, we can make sure that our data is used meaningfully to empower our students and to help them set their own learning goals, which is the ultimate goal of teaching, is to put that ownership into their hands. But it also can help us reflect on our instructional and assessment techniques as to what's working and what, what is not. I hope that you found this article um, useful. I hope that you find some things that you can take back into your primary classrooms and put to use. And thank you so much for joining us.